guys, in today's video, we're going to be going back in time and checking out the Kenner, Batman, and Robin. This is Bane. So how tall is Bane? Well, let's take the tape measure. Bane is approximately five inches in height. Before we look at the figure and the three accessories, oh, 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 package time, package time, package time. Let's have a look at the package that comes included with the Batman and Robin Bane. It's recommended for ages four and up. Just spend a little bit of time talking about this. I wanna kinda of do this for maybe future retro videos especially if I still have the packaging for them, Kenner's down below. On the back, a whole ton of characters that didn't quite look like this in the movies, specifically Batgirl, Bane, and Poison Ivy. Mr. Freeze also doesn't quite look like this. Apparently, Kenner rushed and needed initial concept designs for what these characters were gonna look like so they could quickly get to mass producing the toys before the movie was released. Ultimately, that's what caused a lot of changes between say the Batgirl, for example, and what we ended up getting in the movie. Uh, I do like the look of Bane, which we will talk about obviously in this movie, in this review, not this movie, in this review. And then of course, Mr. Freeze looks kind of cool too. Looks a little bit cooler, no pun intended, than what he ended up looking like in the movie. But if you were to set your time machine, you'd set it back to 1997. What were you doing in 1997? Anyways, let's have a look at his accessories and then we'll look at the figure itself. For starters, he has this kind of armored clad a gauntlet, it almost looks like the Infinity Gauntlet, a little gauntlet uh, armored glove that he holds in his hand, or on his hand rather. You can see that's bolted. It's just been cast in a silver plastic. It's kind of soft. It's not super soft, but it's sort of soft. But it does very much look like the Infinity Gauntlet. It's got one giant blade on the underside. I'm sure if he wore this, his fights with Batman probably would be a lot smaller and a lot shorter, just gouging Batman with this giant blade underneath here. And that fits into his hand, just like so. Blade side down, thumb side up. <coughs> you can, again, gouge Batman. The other thing he comes with too, speaking of like violent weapons, he also comes with what looks to be almost like a mace with a giant blade on the end. It looks like an anchor for a, a giant ship. Bane apparently does not need Venom, he just simply needs these, these weapons of mass destruction. This will fit into his hand, just like so. And uh, it's got a, like a little cord, a little string, so it can dangle, dangle, dangle. It's excessive. I don't picture Bane really as a character that necessarily needs all this, but apparently Kenner does. Kenner thought that just Venom alone isn't enough to make a figure cool. So what they also did include was the Venom uh, contraption, the the uh, control pad that goes onto his arm. And it does such that it clamps onto his arm like so, and it attaches right into his head, right into his noodle, and he's got the Venom the Venom tube as well. Which really for me is the go-to. I'd likely display him more so just with the Venom tube and not maybe all this extra stuff. This seems unnecessary in my own opinion at least. So let's go ahead and take these off. We'll just put those to the side and we'll have a look at the figure itself. Now the figure is actually really nice. I wish Bane looked like this in the movie and not that ridiculous abomination that they ended up having. I believe it was Jeep Swanson, former professional wrestler, roided up professional wrestler, played Bane in the Batman and Super or Batman and Robin movie. I keep wanting to say Batman and Superman because, of course, that's in the public eye right now. But not a bad, again, looking figure. I kind of wish he looked like this in the movie. He goes to a more traditional sort of luchador style mask on the on the, on his head, piercing red eyes, though they are a little on the small side. They at least stand out. You can also make out where his mouth is, which is a nice touch. 
So they did put a lot of effort into the putting wrinkles and creases around his nose, around where his mouth would be, and around the areas where his ears reside. It's got some really cool details, even though most of the figure's details get lost amongst painted black surfaces. So even though the details are there, the black sort of covers over it as it really should because he's wearing a black mask. The white is also a nice touch. Gets a little, mess, a little messy up at the top there. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. As for the rest of his outfits, more cl classic looking Bane colors. Black trunks, black, very high black military style boots. And he's got the blank black tank top. Some black gloves, some black armbands. I don't know really why. They're there, just for, just for the heck of it. And he's also got himself a gold belt. He's very simple in his design. But it really, that's the way Bane should be. He should be very simplistic, just more of a big bruiser than anything else. And again, just did not like the design elements. Maybe if the design had stayed the same, but Bane just wasn't a bumbling mess in the movie, I think I would have liked Bane a little bit more. Like, the, the design wasn't terrible, but man, his the portrayal of Bane was ridiculous. He is very muscular, as you can see. Oh, and also some really nice vein work there in his bicep. Very muscular on the chest. Post-venom injection, I'm, I'm certain. There's the back of it right there. There is a date stamped onto the, his leg. It says 1997. And it also says DC Comics and Kenner. Uh, I don't know what happened here. It almost looked like the dog got a hold of Bane and started nibbling on his leg. It looks like it's all just gnarled up and chewed up. I don't know why that happened. Probably just the way it came out of the the mold. But uh, that's unfortunate. But again, I'm not going to really look at the figure from that any that side anyways. I'm going to be looking at the figure from the front. Posability. Posability. Let's run through it now. His head, just simple swivel. These figures are only five-point articulated figures, so his arms rotate. Nothing in the waist. And simple posability in the legs. Oh, 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 he also has peg holes on the undersides of his feet. Not that he necessarily has a display stand. In fact, I can tell you he doesn't have a display stand. But generally, the figure stands relatively good. In fact, the figure actually stands really good. Bane handled in Batman and Robin movie. Oh my god, so terribly bad. Kenner handling Bane from the Batman and Robin movie. Surprisingly really good. It's one of those figures where you could probably go on eBay and get one of these guys for about $5. In fact, that might actually be a retelling of what happened with this guy. Pick this guy up on eBay for a really good price. Most of the Batman and Robin stuff, really good pricing. There's really not a lot of people picked up these toys when they initially came out. May not find myself picking up every one of them. Maybe I will. I don't know if you guys enjoy these videos. But I definitely did want to pick up Bane because I've always been a big fan of Bane. Handled terribly in the movie, yes, but I think the figure is actually pretty good that I would love to have seen a larger version of this figure, a little bit more articulation. Today's retro video, we were going back in time and looking at the 1997 release of the Kenner Batman and Robin Bane figure. If you guys like these little retro videos, let me know down below in the comments section down below. If you haven't had a chance also to subscribe to this channel, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. Certainly more retro videos will be coming to you during the 2018 year. We are now in 2018, and my New Year's resolution is to bring you guys more retro videos. Uh, retro reviews along with all the other reviews that we're looking at on this channel as well so more retro goodies coming your way guys stay tuned for that thanks for watching as you always do i'll see you guys next time